Hi there and welcome to this tutorial on the language question from section A on the unit 1 exam paper. For those of you studying GCSE English and GCSE English Language and Literature. Okay then, whether you're doing higher or foundation you will be asked to look at a writer's use of language, the words they've chosen, and expected to use the P or Peel format that you may have learnt in school. Um, it's really important to use quotes on this question and if you don't do that, if you don't use textual evidence, you'll get very few marks. The examiner is really interested in whether or not you can explore the effects of words and techniques and also whether you can comment on why writers use them. It's really thinking about the purpose behind it. Was it trying to make a reader feel or think? Okay, if you're doing the higher paper then, uh, this question is worth 16 marks and you should spend 25 minutes on it. You're always going to compare source 3 with another of your choice. And really the format you should use is identifying a language feature, such as those on the screen, finding examples to use as quotes, then an explanation of the effect. So, just for example, it's interesting, it's emotive, it's dramatic. And for lots of extra marks, why that effect has been created. Again, writer's purpose. Now, if you're doing the higher paper, you're having to compare. So it's important that you think, is that similar and or, or different to the other text that you've chosen to, to look at? On the screen, there is an example, and you can hopefully see where the identification of technique is, example or evidence, and then in the green font, the explanation. So the point evidence explains structure, hopefully quite clear there. Okay, foundation. This is worth 12 marks and you should spend around 20 minutes on that. You're always going to be asked to examine source 3. And again, as with the higher paper, it's about identifying a language feature, finding examples you can use as quotes, and an explanation then of the effect. You don't need to compare on this question. Although I'm not particularly keen in giving my students structures, uh, mechanical structures to use in an exam, sometimes if you're really stuck it's a good idea to have a, a backup plan and something like this is quite effective in getting you into the way of explaining the techniques. So you just start off with one thing the writer uses or one thing the writer has included is and in that first blank you would include the, or you would identify the technique, so adjectives, simile, for example, and then you would obviously, using quotation marks, include an example of that technique, and then an explanation about how that technique works. So I think this works well because it engages the reader, is exciting and humorous, and also intrigues us, just as an example. And you can repeat and vary that structure, obviously. Another tip is to develop an acronym that you're going to use. Lots of students have learned GAP, which is Genre, Audience, Purpose. And just identifying that for each of your sources is sometimes quite useful because if you're thinking about a writer's purpose, it's crucial that you think about who are they writing for? Why are they writing that? Because that affects everything that they put down on the page. Another one is a forest. You can see what that relates to. Or just make up your own from linguistic techniques that you've learned. Uh, what's useful about doing this is that you can double it up for section B, because obviously when you're writing, for example, to persuade, it's really important that you've also included some of these techniques within your own writing. Okay, I just want you to have a look now at a couple of student examples. Firstly, for higher paper. Um, I thought what's interesting about this student's plan is that they've really prepared for what they need to talk about. You can see they've used the GAP acronym and also LIST, which um, has sort of varies in what it means, but in this instance looks to be language, imagery, structure and tone. So compare the ways in which language is used for effect, give examples and analyse what the effects are. So let's see how this student got on. In the first sentence in source one, by using humour in the first sentence, there's a quote there, the writer creates a light-hearted effect. So you can see they've done a point evidence explained structure there. It's not a particularly perceptive 
effect. And you'll get more marks the more you can say in that. And again, they do pretty much the same thing in the second paragraph. It's a bit more sustained, i.e. that they keep it going a bit more and, and use a bit more sort of in-depth understanding in this bit. Another example of language used for effect would be where Boardman uses the words, it was a miracle. By using these words, he makes the situation seem extremely helpless, except by some unknown miracle worker. This creates a serious and almost jubilant effect as it puts the story in a happier light as Boardman and Sherpin now have something helping them. See how developed that is, and they've been given credit for it being sustained, and also for it being perceptive, so insightful, reading between the lines. You should be aiming to do. If I'm being picky, for this student to gain full marks, I would have wanted a closer awareness of linguistic techniques, so they should be referring more explicitly to terminology, simile, metaphor. The foundation paper, which as I've mentioned, is not a comparison question. They will often um, give you specific focuses about the writer's use of language. So in this case, to inform and advise. Now this is an excellent example because this student is really com comfortable and confident with identifying features. See here, rhetorical questions, and they use the piece structure brilliantly. There's a quote here and they sort of give an effect. Now, see here that the examiner has written simple comment effect, but further down in paragraph two, comment effect. Now, there's a real difference between making a general comment about the effect, and this is things like makes the reader think, draws us in, catches our attention. These are just general. It could be about anything, but what you're trying to do is make it specific to the quote you've chosen. So they do it much better in this second one. The leaflet contains command sentences such as, there's the quote, this puts the reader in a situation which they have no choice but to do what they're told. So you can see it's more specific. And again, these third and fourth paragraphs are really quite good in terms of um, the way they explore the effects of the, the language feature. It's really well structured as well. Look how they use furthermore to show they're adding detail. And all the way through, key facts, imperative sentences. This student is showing a really strong understanding of language techniques, which is great. If you could do, you know, in your exam, if you could write in this style, you'd be really looking to get close to top marks. So it's about learning and remembering, being able to recall a range of linguistic techniques. You should be doing this as part of your ongoing revision. So, back of a cereal box, pizza delivery menu, a magazine. Can you see these features? Why are they being used? So, brief overview. Foundation paper, you're analysing source three, no comparison. Higher paper, you're analysing source three and one other of your choice. But regardless of which paper you do, you're always going to need to identify a language technique, Find a relevant example and use that with quotation marks in your answer. And then really explain what effect that particular quote and technique has had upon the reader and think about why the writer has ultimately included it within their piece. Okay, best of luck.